dear diary, it's been an incredible start to life at Arsenal as we still sit on top of the Premier League table. Our last match against Brentford was a great performance, picking up a comfortable 3-0 win that showcased the talent of our squad. However, we have a tough challenge ahead of us as we face Aston Villa, who handed us a 4-1 defeat earlier in the season. It's going to be a test of our character and determination, and I can't wait to see how the team responds. Following that, we have a trip to Old Trafford to take on Manchester United, after beating them 3-1 earlier in the season. It's always a tough match against one of our rivals, but I believe we have what it takes to come away with another victory. In the midst of all these important fixtures, the transfer window has opened up, and we've made a bold move by putting in a bid for Kylian Mbappe on a free transfer for next season. He's one of the most talented players in the world, and I'm excited at the prospect of him joining our squad and adding even more firepower to our attack. All in all, it's an exciting time to be an Arsenal fan, and I can't wait to see what the future holds for our team. Until next time. everyone and welcome to episode 87 of FMOE here on Sean Does FM with Arsenal. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we do start off the month of January and the January transfer window. We are playing our first two games of the month both in the Premier League. First up we host Aston Villa after a bit of an embarrassing loss to those guys earlier in the season at Villa Park and off the back of that hopefully we can pick up two victories in the season in the Premier League over Manchester United from Old Trafford. So if you're looking forward to today's episode, which does also include a little bit of transfer news, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but we have played the one game since the episode at the end of last week where we did take on both Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League and Liverpool in the Premier League. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner as you saw through the intro. We've just played the one game since then in the Premier League away at Brentford and picked up a quite good 3-0 win there, rotating a few of our players in that game. So it was quite a good win and does mean we have a five-point gap on top of the Premier League. Hopefully, we can keep that by the end of today's episode in this first game is going to be a big one as well as we do take on Aston Villa still up in second halfway through the season we'll see how long they do hold on to that especially as one of their key players in Jamie Kelly is wanted by Bayern Munich and it does sound like they are going to put a bid in for him fairly soon so it could be a transfer they actually make quite a bit of money from and can spend throughout the rest of this window but if they do lose him that could impact how these guys do perform for the rest of the season, so hopefully while he is there, we can still pick up some points against the team who, as you saw through the intro as well, did beat us rather heavily 4-1 earlier in the season, and off the back of that, we did switch to using a Gagan press away from home, but before we do have a look at the Aston Villa club overall, and Manchester United as well, of course we did play these guys in the same episode at some stage last week, but a quick update on what has happened so far in the January transfer window, it's only been open for a few hours, but we have put a bid in for a free transfer to try and get Kylian Mbappe to the Emirates for next season. We were able to add a bit to our wage budget. It was already just over £400,000 a week with around £10 million in that transfer budget. Well, since then, we have actually told the board we can challenge for the title. So our transfer budget has actually just gone up a little bit. So what that has meant as well is that we could boost up that wage budget the same. So it does mean we have been able to offer him a contract of around about £475,000 a week, and as well as that, a lot of bonuses also in for Mbappe. Are the two big Spanish clubs in Barcelona and Real Madrid, and I also believe that Pelé Saint-Germain are trying to renew that contract, but hopefully we can get him over the line to join us here at the Emirates for the next season. It would be a huge transfer and add some real world-class striking power up front for us. We do have Gabriel Jesus at the moment, but fair to say that Mbappe is a notable step up, and I'm hopeful that we do get him as well. He apparently is extremely interested in a move here, so hopefully he does make it, and we'll see what does happen, but that could be a big bit of business 
that might be concluded hopefully at some stage during today's episode. If not, we'll update you guys on that one in tomorrow's one, which will be a little bit later in the January transfer window. And that's pretty much all that's happened so far in relation to the first team. I'm going to try and sell Alexander Sinchenko as he is not renewing his contract. But so far, no teams are willing to meet the price that we have agreed to sell him for but we might have to reduce that come the latter part of the transfer window to make sure that we do make some money and do not let him go on a free transfer at the end of the season. But coming up today is Premier League action. First up, it is a top of the table clash as we do take on Aston Villa. As I said before, big loss against these guys earlier this season. So hopefully back at home, we can get some redemption for that. And off the back of that, we take on the team that they bet 6-1 not too long ago. And also, we should have actually bet them by the same scoreline earlier this season if we didn't miss free penalties in that exact game. But we do take on United, who come into this one in a pretty average run of form. Their only recent win did come on penalties. In the EFL Cup quarterfinal, they do play Leicester on the same day that we play Aston Villa, but they are still struggling down in 11th. Hopefully off the back of a 3-1 win earlier this season, even though this one is from Old Trafford, we can pick up two wins against these guys in the Premier League this season. However, we are going to do that with a few injuries, especially going into that first game against Aston Villa. As you can see, Bakayo Saka, nearly back from injury, can actually feature from the bench in this upcoming game, but ideally we won't use him in that capacity, but he is an option from the bench for the first game, but should be back for that Man United one. The same can be said. For Francisco Trincao, he has got a twisted knee, should also be back for that Man United game. And as well as that, Albert Sambi Lekonga has a groin strain, so that means he is going to be out for a little bit longer, might be missing for both games in today's episode, albeit that might not hurt us too much, because to be fair, he is only a squad player anyway, but some big injuries to two of our wing options and two players who, to be fair, have been starting for us quite a bit recently, but hopefully... They can feature in that second game in today's episode. So expect some changes on both wings, especially for this first game. As we do take on Aston Villa, but we'll come back shortly and hopefully stay on top of the Premier League table by at least five points as we try and get some revenge on Aston Villa. And here are the team sheets for this first game of today's episode. We're actually pretty close to full strength for this one because Martinelli is on the left wing, but just Fabio Carvalho in there for Saka seeing as he can't quite last a full game. Hopefully, he will be good for that second one in today's episode. The Aston Villa with a 4-3-3 at home. Hopefully, this time, the Tiki Taka does the job and we get revenge for that earlier 4-1 defeat. And a very early highlight in this one, a minute into it, it's a throw in here for Aston Villa. They are playing with their back to goal here, but they eventually get that out to their central defenders. Try and play it forward, but good interception there from Bamba, stepping well out. From his central defensive position. Now Martinelli with a shot. It falls for Jesus. We'll sweep that one home. It's a fortunate goal. But it is a great start for us. Here we go. 1-0 up. Nice and early. No idea there why there's a TV and Z plus ad in the background. That's a bit of free advertising. They don't deserve. But nonetheless we go 1-0 up. Nice and early. Martinelli from that good inception from Bamba. Fortunate deflection. But Jesus will sweep that home. Might be making a mark here. Seeing as Mbappe. Could potentially be on his way to the club at a brilliant start. We go 1-0 up nice and early. And off the back of that, we do have a free kick. It's being scrambled around the box here a little bit. But Bilo will control that for Aston Villa. And this highlight will continue. They pump that deep. But thankfully, Tenny does win that for Patrick Schick. Can get on the ball now. Martinelli will get there before the Aston Villa player tries to square that one for Erdegaard. But now Cully, of course, under some interest. From Bayern Munich was on the ball, loses it. Fabio Carvalho plays the swing out to Tommy Arso in space. Down that right-hand side, Carvalho in the box. will square that one for Odegaard. Forces a decent save there out of Bailo. So some good early chances. And we are 1-0 up. And around 10 minutes off the back of those opening highlights. Now it's a corner here for Aston Villa. But thankfully Ramsdale will come and claim that before it does go to a player at the far post. We'll roll this one out short for Saliba these days. Ramsdale with both tactics is just on a goalkeeper with defend duty. I've figured out now sweeper keepers just do not work in this year's game, but we do have the ball here. I think Koopman is there. Was a bit fortunate to keep it indeed. This is a bit of a helter-skelter highlight. Somehow hudson Adoy gets in behind Tomoyasu there, not doing his defensive work. Of course, I suppose he is on attack with this tiki-taka style. 
Mbemba outside the box with a shot looking for that top right corner forces a decent save there out of Ramsdale at the 20 minute mark. We are still 1-0 up. And just past the half hour mark we get our next highlight in this game. It starts with a free kick here for Aston Villa still 1-0 up and fairly dominant in this game apart from that most recent chance which Aston Villa did here. We put some pressure on them as they do try and play out from the back but the goalkeeper pumps this deep and thankfully Saliba does win that one in the air. Coop Miners up for Udegaard. Now Carvalho down this right hand side. Can he put this one into the mixer? Plays this one back for Tomiyasu. Apparently that is a penalty that Cucurella has been accused of there. We are going to wait for a VAR check. Just thinking, have I changed this since last time? Apparently Gabriel Jesus is taking. We might change that and go back to Coop Miners because he's actually been quite decent since that miss that he did have against Bayern and then of course against Manchester United the last time that we did play those guys when we missed those three penalties in the same game. So we'll just adjust things here to make sure Coop Miners is going to take this penalty and hopefully that has been sorted out now and indeed it looks like it has because he's on a different foot than Gabriel Jesus would be and hopefully this time puts it away otherwise I'll look like a right idiot. I'm a genius. Two in the last nil, 10 minutes shy of half time. Thankfully, we did sort that out. Jesus might have scored it, but to be fair, has looked a bit iffy from the penalty spot so far this season. And that is a good goal from Coop Miners. And we go 2 0 up, just shy of half time. And that is half time in this first game of today's episode. And we go into the sheds 2 0 up and quite happy with how this one is going. Aston Villa are creating some chances, but we have looked a lot more dominant. Obviously, XG helped out massively. By that penalty, I did say that that was a good second goal. That wasn't quite true. It was from the penalty spot, but still, I'm the Arsenal manager. I'll take any goal that we do get. And we go into the sheds tonight. We are going to make one change, though. Kieran Tierney is on a yellow card for this game. We have rested some players who are quite injury prone. So that does mean that Yakubu is our left back backup instead of Zinchenko. So he will come on for the second half. And hopefully, we can hold on, get some revenge, and get three points and stay on top of the Premier League table. And up to the hour mark, we're just going to check in on some players here. I think there might be a good opportunity here still being 2-0 up. No highlights so far in the second half to take off some of the players who are most injury prone coming into this game. So I think taking off Martinelli might be a good idea, especially with the likes of Trinkau still out injured. So we'll try Vera out on the left wing for the latter stages of this one. And also, both our defensive midfielders are quite deep on those yellow hearts. We'll take them off for Ugate and Patino still tune up with a half hour left. And shortly off the back of those substitutions, we do have a throw in here, which Yukubu does play to Vieira. And now Tomiyasu inside the box tries to pull out a massive dive there. It doesn't get given as a peony, but Ugate just outside the box plays that one for Patino, fresh off the bench. Now Yakubu, who's also picked up a yellow card, Vieira inside the box back for Yakubu, Patino to Ugate. We're building up nicely there, albeit Cavallo does lose out on position. We get it back. Big chance there for Carvalho though, but he puts that one over the bar. So we are still up by two goals to nil. And about 10 minutes off the back of those previous substitutions and that last highlight, we are going to make our last one. Carvalho playing well, but has picked up a yellow card. We'll play things safe. And one of our youngsters, Jan Pulik, can come on for him. Still 2-0 up with around about 20 minutes left. And inside the last 10 minutes of this one, we do have a free kick here in a dangerous spot. Erdegaard will try and put this one into hopefully that top right corner. The goalkeeper is leaning towards the other side. It comes off the corner and Aston Villa just do enough to clear that one away as Saliba tries to put that one back into the mixer. So a decent chance there from a free kick. But Aston Villa do just deal with it. And with only a few minutes left in this one now, it looks like we're going to take home all three points and get some revenge on Aston Villa for earlier in the season. This time, of course, though, at home. And it might mean we go clear of them on the Premier League table, albeit I did see before Liverpool, who were joint on points with them, are beating Leeds United. So I think we'll still only be five points clear. And we're going to do it with a 3-0 win because Fabio Vieira links up with his new wing partner in Jan Pulik. It's a good finish just inside that far post. Might have even hit it to go over the line. And that will make it 3-0 to pick up three points to move a swing from that 4-1 defeat last week against these guys at Villa Park. But that is how you play a game, a very early goal and a very late one as well. That penalty in between 
and a fairly dominant performance. Aston Villa didn't do a lot there in that second half. In fact, nothing. If you look at the XG match story and a pretty good performance there, as you would expect from what was pretty close to our first team, just for Kyo Saka to come back into it, hopefully, before we play that second game of today's episode against Manchester United. But that is a good win against second in the table, even though it was at home. And as you can see, that does mean now still five points clear on top of the table. But these days of Liverpool are further three points back to the likes of Aston Villa West Ham and not far behind that. Two Newcastles are in a quite good position just over halfway through the season. And hopefully we can pick up three more points in our next game as we travel to Old Trafford to take on Manchester United. And here are the team sheets as we look for back-to-back -back wins this season over a Manchester United team who are really struggling. Only picked up a draw against Leicester in that game on the same day that we beat Aston Villa. But in terms of us, Saka is back on the right wing. But also, if it does start Kamara over Saliba, because he is quite injury prone. Also, our bench for this one, a little bit stronger than it was for that first game. So hopefully, we can pick up a similar result here with the Gagan Press from Old Trafford. Yeah. And halfway through the first half, I think for the first time since we have actually joined Arsenal, we have busted out the rigger because Moisa Pelay has picked up a serious injury. Hopefully that doesn't leave him out for too long, but that could be a bit concerning. Charlie Patino comes on for him, but so far no highlights in this one. Still nil all just past the half hour mark. And we eventually get a highlight in this game with 10 minutes to go in the first half and it is Man United here with a chance on the counter attack. Marcus Rashford makes his way inside the box he just squares that one looking for Pinamonte but thankfully that one takes a big deflection Ramsdale can make a save and still nil all albeit not too long off the back of that it is a throw in here for Man United so far looking like they might be slightly on the front foot in this game albeit big chance here for Martinelli to do something for us on the counter attack but just puts that one a bit too deep for Gabriel Jesus albeit it gets floated out to Saka back in the team back from his injury just inside the byline, we'll pick out Udegaard, it's a big chance, but Buddy Achille is on the line to clear that one away, so still nil all a few minutes shy of half time. And that is half time in this clash against Manchester United, just one highlight there for both teams, and to be fair, both shots did have a bit of a deflection on them, so it wasn't really a threatening chance for either team, the big bit of news from that first half, a potentially long term injury to Parade, but we're going to make a few substitutions here, Kamara. 6.4 yellow card Yakubu can come on again, but this time at centre back and also Vera for Martinelli because he is also on a poor rating. But hopefully, a bit more happens in the second half and it is in our favour. We'll get things back underway. Still locked up at nil. Now, it hasn't taken long for the first highlight in the second half. It's a free kick here for Man United as one of their players gets in the way of it. And Gravenberch, but Rashford eventually does try and pick out the top right corner. That one goes just wide off the post, or just high as well. And while we are here, we are going to make a substitution as Martin Ugard has just picked up a yellow card. Usually Vieira is our backup in that position, but he has already been used. So because of that, we're going to try and bring on Fabio Carvalho, and we'll switch him out to the right, suck it out to the left. In fact, they're actually better suited. So Carvalho stays out on that left-hand side for the rest of this game, and hopefully we can do something in this game, because so far been a bit quiet, with about half hour left. Still nil all. And about 10 minutes off the back of that previous substitution, we are going to make our last one because Saka coming back from that injury is one of a few players down to a red heart. Jesus can play right wing and left wing, so I think we might actually switch him with Saka and bring on Manuel Bolea for the later stages of this one. Hopefully get a bit more going forward because so far been a little bit quiet. In fact, Jesus can play that inside forward attack role pretty well as well. So I think that's what we'll do for the later stages of this one but still a quiet game, locked up at nil all. And a few minutes off the back of us using our last substitution, there is eventually another highlight in this game. United of the ball here inside the final third, Rashford. He nearly gets on the attack there. We try and clear it, don't do a good job, but eventually Bamba does clear that one decently, albeit straight into the path of a United player. Now Lopez up for Graven Birch, plays that over for Marcus Rashford. He gets in behind our defence eventually and buries that one. And we go 1-0 down here with around about 25 minutes left, and maybe we're going to suffer another loss here with the Gagan Press. Of course, we suffered one during the episode at the end of last week against West Ham, but that is a well-built goal, that one, Rashford, too much pace. 
support our defense and we are one nil down away from home. And with just over 10 minutes left in this game, there is another highlight as we try and get a goal back to grab an equalizer. We have just told our players to be a bit more wide in attack, so hopefully that does happen and might create a chance late in this one because so far we haven't been at our best and we do give the ball away there. So Man United might get a chance here to make it 2-0, but hopefully we can win the ball back. Simakan plays that one forward for Pellegri, takes a touch, keeps the ball, plays it back for Lopez, albeit we surround him quite nicely. Barea can't quite win that one back now. Buddy is Chile to grab him. Boots, it's a dangerous challenge there from Barea, but we do get the ball back now. Vera makes his way down that left-hand side, plays that one in for Jesus, unleashes one. It goes just over the bar. Might be time for us to go positive for these last 10 minutes. Still 1-0 down. And just entering injury time in this game, and unfortunately looks like we're going to suffer a loss to Manchester United, which is a bit surprising considering we really should have thumped them earlier this season with all those penalties they did give away. We still beat them 3-1, so it was still a pretty handy result. But today, we just didn't play as well as we can, albeit stats-wise, certainly. You'd think we were the better team in that game, but our shots on target obviously were not that threatening. Marcus Rashford struck with just over 20 minutes left, and it does mean we suffer a 1-0 defeat in one of our games against our rivals. So no doubt the fans won't be too happy with that one. Not a great performance, as I said. Not really many good chances that we did create throughout the course of that game. So unfortunately, it does mean that it might give Liverpool the chance to close the gap on us at the top of the table. As you can see, most teams on this match day do have a game in hand still, but we suffer a defeat away from home to Manchester United at Old Trafford, and we'll just see how long is out for when we do come back. And going forward a few clicks off the back of that loss to Manchester United, as I said, a disappointing one, but as you can see, our lead on top of the Premier League has indeed been shrunk now only to two points as Liverpool pick up a very comfortable 5-0 win in a home Merseyside derby. So now our gap on top of the table isn't quite as big as it was, albeit still are challenging for the title. So thankfully that change that we did make Getting into this transfer window should still be happening, but a bit disappointed to lose to Manchester United after we did bump them during last week, albeit that is somewhat countered by the fact that Aston Villa bumped us last week and we picked up a good result against those guys in the first game of today's episode. But there is what the table does look like after 21 games have been played. Also, an injury update as Moisa Pelé did pick one up during that Manchester United game. He is going to be out for a fair while, four to six weeks, with sprained knee ligaments. It does mean Charlie Patino and Sambi Lokonga, when he comes back from an injury, which to be fair, is very soon, will be getting a run in that deep-lying playmaker role, and I think it's the roaming playmaker when we do play with that gag and press, but he so far has been one of our better players since we have signed him when we first took over here at Arsenal, so that could test us out a little bit as well over the rest of January and for maybe the early stages of February as well. So that is a big injury. But we do have some good news to end today's episode on. It's not quite official yet, but it looks like it pretty much is as well, because Kylian Mbappe is in the process of getting a work permit granted. So I presume that means we're going to have Kylian Mbappe for the 2030-31 season here at Arsenal. And that is going to be all sorts of fun. Let's just hope we don't find a way to get sacked before then, because that would be absolutely heartbreaking. But we'll leave today's episode on that slight bombshell. A bit surprised that we are going to get Mbappe over the likes of Real Madrid, PSG, and Barcelona. But that will do it for today's episode. One good win, one loss. And it looks like the signing of Kylian Mbappe for next season. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back in the latter stages of January. We've actually got a big game in between now and then, or a couple in the EFL Cup semi-finals, albeit we will put our rotated team for those games in all likelihood, because the board do not care about that competition, otherwise we probably would come back for that one in today's episode and skipped over probably that Man United game. Thankfully we didn't because we did suffer a defeat in that one, which is always nice to show because it doesn't actually happen often these days. Here at Arsenal, there are quite a few cup games in between now and the end of the month and also the last few games 
in the league phase of the Champions League, albeit we should still be finishing in the top eight with those two games being at home against Bodo Glimt and Celtic. So I think we're going to come back late in the month as we do take on Newcastle at home. They currently find themselves third on the table. That could be a big game if we are still above Liverpool. In the Premier League, some stuff does happen on deadline day. We'll cover it during the middle of tomorrow's episode and then take on Bournemouth as well. In the Premier League, I think the FA Cup, we should get through the first round at the very least, the third round for us against Swindon Town fairly comfortably. So I think the two games will come back for tomorrow. Newcastle and Bournemouth in the Premier League and also maybe some deadline day business if we still haven't got rid of someone like Alexander Sinchenko and also confirm the signing hopefully of Kylian Mbappe once his work permit does get granted like it should be. So that's what's coming up in tomorrow's episode. Until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on and I'll see you then. Cheers.